Hello and welcome to another utility precast training video. In this video, we're going to be reinforcing a covert section. Let's jump right in. Here we are back in our utility precast training model. We're going to start off by switching our selection filter to the assembly, single clicking on a covert, right click, create view, default views. This is going to create our four standard CAD views. Minimize this back view and we're going to tile horizontally. So these fill up here. Now, what you can do to kind of clean up some of these lines, these are cut lines. You can single click in the background and you can click on this eyeball and you can turn off your cuts. You can do this in all your views or just whatever view you are currently working in. It's a nice, quick and helpful tool. You can turn things on or off. So inside this 3D view, what we're going to be doing first is we're going to come to our concrete tab rebar set and create crossing bar. Make sure you change your selection filter back to this white Christmas tree also. You'll notice that as I hover over my culvert shape, the rebar set automatically scans the shape and it's kind of producing the profile as I'm moving my cursor around the shape. So what we're gonna do is we're first, we're gonna find this leading edge here and you'll notice that this won't work if you're off the edge. So as I'm moving my cursor around here, it's not finding any lines. It's not knowing what I want to scan. So you have to come to these leading edges here. They're always looking for an edge, and that's how you get that shape. So come to this kind of corner edge here, and once you get the, the outside extremities, single click. And now the only thing you have to do from here is middle mouse. And you'll notice here, if I turn see-through view, we have just essentially created one single huge loop strip around our culvert. Obviously, this is not what most precasters do here. So what we need to do is we need, need to create some splitters throughout here. So to do this, you need to have your direct modification on, which is down here at the bottom, or you can press D on your keyboard. Zoom in real close to your bar and single select on it. Now, once you do that, you'll notice that this extra rebar um, kind of interface popped up here in the upper right. And that this interface is only accessible through the direct modification. If you do not have your direct modification on and you click on your bars, you will not get access to this added interface here. So now that we have this interface open, let's select the splitter. And all you need to do is kind of the same goes with uh, the planar bars and crossing bars. When we were trying to find the extremities, you need to go uh, kind of a, along the edge here. Uh, likewise, you need to come kind of along the length of the piece here. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of come somewhere about the middle and just select uh, with my left click. I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom here. So just kind of following along the length of those bars. And if you zoom in closer, you can get more and more precise with these numbers. But just kind of looking for that nice midpoint. And then once you, once you find it or you get close to it, you just drop it in. And so this, so basically what we've done is we've added a splitter on the top, splitter on the bottom. Now we've got two C bars. This is what some precasters do. If you were to create L bars here, you could create a vertical splitter here. So somewhere at that five foot 10 mark and come here to that same five foot 10 mark and single click. So now we've essentially split up this huge, you know, one big, one big strip into essentially all these L bars at the corners. Now, if you single click back on your bars and you find these orange, this orange line here, this is your splitter. So if you single click on your splitter and open up your property or yep, your properties cog over here on the side, all the rebar splitter properties will come up here and you can choose from all these different options how and kind of what you want to do. So right now the bars are affected are one to one. So that's basically saying every bar is going to be um, is going to be split. If you want to skip over, like every other bar, you can do one to two and press modify, and now you'll notice how it's skipping over every other bar. If I go back, um, you can change things like the lap length here. So right now there's a two foot lap length. If you want that to be more or less, just come in here and change that three feet. Now you notice the lap length is increased. So very quickly, very easily, you can you know skip through your culvert, add in splitters where you want um, without creating a whole new rebar set. Now, when it comes to these rebar sets, uh, you can turn your DM off now if you want. And by single clicking on your rebar set, you'll notice over here on your property cog, this is how you 
manipulate your rebar. This is how you change your size of your rebar. So instead of number fives, if you want number fours, press modify. Everything is dynamically changing. If you don't, if you want to change the spacing, right now I've got eight inches on center. If you want to change that to 12 inches on center, press modify. Everything is automatically relayed out for you. You can target spaces. So you can target if you have a set number of spaces that you need to hit per the calculations. If you need you know, 15 spaces, you could type that in. Or if you want to do uh, exact spacing of bars, you can do that as well. So now with the outer bars in, let's continue on. Next, we're going to do is reinforce the inner mat here. And to do that, we're going to create some planar bars. And what we're going to do, you'll notice that this little contextual toolbar pops up for this set of rebar sets. And what we're going to do is make sure you have it on the near face. And then we're going to do create in both axes. Now this part is important. You'll notice as I am uh, kind of same before as I'm kind of scanning around my piece, this little checkerboard is kind of following me around and scanning the piece. Now what we want to make sure that we do is we're going to come on the inside of the piece here. So it is important that you're clicking, you know, you're actually clicking on the inside face and you're not clicking through the upper face because that can change the result here. So we're going to click on these inner fit. We're just going to kind of pan around, click on the top face, click on the side face, click on the bottom face, and then click on the left face. And just with those single clicks here, we're dropping in that inner mat of both horizontal and vertical bars. Now, likewise, we're going to come to the rebar set, planar bars, and we're just going to create it in the short axes. And what we're going to do is kind of the same thing, but now we're going to create it on the outside mat. So I'm just going to step around, click top, click the left, go then go to the underside. I'm going to click on the bottom side of the culvert and then up here on the right side of the culvert. Now there's really two things left to do. The first being some precasters like to throw a diagonal in the haunch. So to showcase that, kind of the fastest way to do that I would do with a crossing bar. And you're going to look for this inner, this inner shape here. So if you can do a, uh, a control four is what I did to make my, sh my shape solid. And then just look for this inner line and you can single click on it. Now this contextual toolbar, you're gonna select the unselect all legs because by default, it's gonna wanna place them on all of the extremities of the shape. So you unselect the legs. Now if you zoom in really close here, this little gray line here is actually the rebar leg. So you can just single click on that leg and you'll notice down here in this view, it's also selected because all these views are parametric. And then I can just middle mouse. And now the only thing that that's done is that's created a diagonal bar here. So I can just kind of step around my shape. My command will stay active. I don't have to reinitiate it. I unselect the leg. I single click, zoom in real close, single click on that bar, middle mouse. Now you notice I have it here. Do the same thing. Unselect all legs. Single click, middle mouse. Now I've got it down on the bottom left. The last one down here on the bottom right. Unselect all legs and middle mouse. Now I've got that diagonal. Now what you're probably thinking to yourself is, yeah, that's a pretty unlikely diagonal and it needs to extend beyond. So let's tackle that next. So to do that, we're going to turn our direct modification back on down here on the bottom or D on our keyboard. Zoom in really close to one of your diagonals, or if it's easier to work in your 2D view, go to your end view and just single click on it. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an end detail. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a detail on the far left side and the far right side, and we're gonna tell the bar to extend a certain distance, whatever distance we tell it to. So I'm gonna add an end detail. And just like we explained before, it's very important that you're looking for some kind of edge here. So right now I'm kind of moving up and down along in this bar line. If you'll, you'll notice as I get inside of here, it's very hard for Tecla to know and scan what you're, what you're trying to do. So I'm going to come to this very, you know, kind of the furthest point down here and single click. By default, Tecla will assume that you're wanting to hook the bars. That's kind of the default standard for the end detail. All right, so if you single click on this line here, you'll bring open your property cog for the end detail modifier. You can change to no hook and you can change this here 
and press modify. And now we've basically taken off the hook. Now we can come here to the leg adjustment type and we can set there to be an end offset. So now we can just say, if it needs to extend you know, six inches, you can set that. And now just like that, you can see from this end view, it's extended six inches. You can obviously specify this to whatever you want. If it needs to be eight inches, and it'll automatically adjust. Now that these settings are saved in here, the next time you, we apply an end modifier over here, notice what happens. So, sorry, an end detail. So we're gonna apply that end detail all the way up here. And notice the bar automatically shoots up and over because it's assuming we're, we're wanting to do that same command. So I'm just gonna skip around here to all of my angled bars, angled corbel bar, bars and apply that end detail, and apply the end detail. You can leave the command active for each bar, but when you skip around to the next bar, you need to interrupt, single click on the bar, and then reinitiate the command. So on the top, on the bottom, right click interrupt, come down to my last set, and end detail, click on the bottom, and then click on the top. And just like that, you have all of your diagonal bars for your corbels. Now, the final thing that I wanted to showcase here was sometimes these inner mats may protrude through to kind of fill this gap of unreinforced concrete. So to do that, make sure you're on the white Christmas tree and your direct modification is turned off. The other thing you need to check to make sure that is on is on this rebar display options, make sure that your leg face visibility is turned on like I have it right now. So you're gonna come to any one of your mats that you're trying to do, single click on your mat. You'll notice the mat has these handles. These are going to be bound to the shape geometry. But if you highlight one of them, or highlight a group of them rather, you can, you can stretch and move them to kind of fill empty spaces. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard and I'm gonna draw a box from the from left to right over one of these uh, pick points. And you'll notice now this one is filled in. Notice on, on these other ones, they're, they're not filled in. So when I move this to the left here, these are gonna hold true to their locations. This, only this one is going to move to the left. So I can just click right click, I can move, click a start point, and then I can click an end point. I can specify a distance here. So if I wanted it to extend 14 inches that way, I can extend it. Likewise, if I wanted this mat to move with it, hold Alt, box over just this handle. If, you, if it's done correctly, you'll notice that your other handles are not shaded in. Right click, move, click on the start, and then I'm holding my mouse in the direction I want to move. If I wanted to move this to the right, I'll hold my mouse to the right. I'm wanting to move this to the left, that same distance. I'm holding it to the left. You can either wait for your uh, value to appear as you're moving to the left, or I can just type in one, four inches, enter. And then you'd basically re repeat this process. So I'll maybe just do this one really quick. Hold Alt, move, come here, 14, interrupt, click this top map, over. So 14. So just like that, you guys now know how to fully reinforce your culvert. Thank you for watching.